and they're one step closer to a $100,000 prize. As long as you don't get distracted, which is what I'll be doing constantly. Joel, it's always so lovely and fun to chat with you. Um, before we do tell everyone why you're here today, I want to congratulate you on Yellow Jackets. And oh, thank you. Yeah, and I know you can't talk too much about the show. Uh, everything's really kept under wraps. But I'm just wondering, what is something that's exciting you most about your addition to Yellow Jackets? Well, I play a fast-talking lawyer and, uh, you know, who brings together a, like a study group at a community college. <laughs> and, right. Uh, and it's, um, you know, it's I've never done anything like that. So that's oh. it's very exciting. No, uh, what can I tell you? I, I was thinking about how, how I would tell people, and there's not a lot I can say without spoiling what, I, what I'm doing. Because mm. uh, soon as I say what I'm doing, then it'll yeah. say what I'm doing. And <laughs> how's that for a, a concise interview answer? Other than um, I'm very excited to be on it. How yeah. about that? Yeah, I, I'm very excited for you. I think it's nice to see a different uh, side of you. You're more than just Jeff Winger. You are also a whole bunch of, you're amalgamation of every single serious character that there is. And I'm very, I'm very happy for you. But um, yeah, I know. My character's named Jeff Winger. Uh, his name Jeff Winger. I love that. Um, that's a very different turn for Jeff. Um, but I am excited for you. We can talk about that some more later. I want to shift from cannibal teens to good food for humans. I think it's it's important to talk about. Um, you are partnering with Rice Aroni for their new macaroni. Yes. Um, so what, yeah, yeah. What compelled you to be part of this collaboration? Was there a moment where you thought this is like the perfect cheesy role for me, knowing that you can yes, next? yeah. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. Look, um, look, I when something like this, when they came to me, I was like, you are asking the right guy, mm -hmm. uh, rice aroni, uh, because uh, I've grown up, I grew up eating tons of rice aroni, and then you know, now they're launching macaroni, which uh, I have eaten a lot of and uh, and given it to my family, and they're like, more, and so it becomes like um, Oliver the musical, and uh, it's so yeah i know it was like when they asked me i was like uh, you have no idea how excited i am and oh. yeah they named me their uh chief uh macaroni officer the mm. uh yeah the smaro uh yeah. so it, yeah when i told my parents they were like well that's great dear and uh, we grew we had lots of that growing up and i was like well like, hold on to your hat mom and dad because now comes some macaroni so yeah uh, i i ate I we did that TED it was kind of like a parody on a TED talk and uh they let me tell a lot of jokes mm -hmm. and uh, I ate uh I ate so much macaroni and uh, then I took a bunch home. Yeah. Uh, so, uh if you'd like some I I can send it to you. I would love macaroni. Um I think one of the things also that's so perfect about this is that I know you love eating, you know, steaks, you love having grilled meats. Um this is also the perfect side dish to those sorts of things. So like is there anything like uh you can recommend to people when they are having this as a side dish? It's the creamy cheddar and the regular cheddar, I believe. The white cheddar. Well, so. hmm. I like them both. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, I would say I'm not kidding. Like so, I uh, we I made steak two nights ago, and we we made the creamy white cheddar alongside, mm -hmm. and uh, it was great. You know, like when you go to a steakhouse and you see the sides, uh, there's always usually like a like a lobster macaroni or something like that. Yeah. Uh, so this is like making you know it's like making your own side dish for uh for yeah my kids they're in their teens now, so they eat like. They, they they they're very lucky to be getting this good food and uh but yeah it's it's also very quick and uh because i as you know i don't run around at all uh doing this and that so uh -huh. it's it was it's very quick and uh for the amount of labor that you have to put in to make it it's the, uh -huh. the payoff is about a thousand percent so uh yeah so they loved it and they 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 are outside here begging for more of it right now and uh -huh. so yeah so it was it's the perfect side dish and uh i've already gone through a couple of cases of it that's great no that's that's exactly how they want you to they want you to eat it that's that's, that's their product that's how it works <laughs> the macaroni experience yeah. is having a being there, being yeah. tomorrow really comes in handy and i brag about it all over my house now like, yeah okay <laughs> you guys Wait, are having the yeah, you're you're having the macaroni pop up event in New York City, which is yes, a lot on the 26th. 
Yes, yes. It's September 26th. Um, what are you most looking forward to at the event? Uh, well, it's it's going to be in Soho, and uh, it's open to the public. And please come by and try uh, Rice Aroni's macaroni. I'll I'll be there, and I'm I'm very excited to meet you guys. And uh, yeah, it's gonna it's like a, a day long um, experience, as they say. Yeah, a macaroni experience, and you know it's New York, and who doesn't like pasta? And, yeah. Uh, so there's, it'll, that'll be on hand and, uh, uh, it'll be, yeah, they working with rice aroni, they've been so great that, so it'll be like a really fun A plus experience. And, mm. uh, it's also the perfect time of the year. So it won't be, it won't be stifling and, <laughs> uh, it won't be a uh, bone chilling. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be that. Yeah. Perfect. It's the, it's a chill in the air so it'll be nice to have a uh, cozy warm weather with a uh, warm mac and cheese um, you'll you know, have to come down from toronto i will have to do that i will come by we'll see you know uh <laughs> in crime scene kitchen you often see so many elaborate creations how does a show like that influence your approach to cooking up something as classic as rice aroni's macaroni well some of those desserts they are days in the making and the I, the the brain power it takes to like some of the elaborate uh, cake recipes like the I don't know, like the like an opera cake I you know like I was a like, kid so I'm just gonna whip up an opera cake and uh, I that would be something that would be uh, near impossible given wow. the time constraints and uh, you know like the, this is such a quick thing to make and the the payoff is really like if, if we had if they had to make uh rice aroni macaroni on crime scene kitchen um yeah we'd be done and we'd be uh, we, they wouldn't need four hours of uh baking time and uh we'd be very satisfied uh but it yeah so it yeah i you know i mean you've seen my instagram that i have an, i love enough food that I, and when people go what do you like dessert or savory i'm like i like it all mm -hmm. if it's good it's just really good and we've seen on crime scene some real disasters and the poor people uh, then you feel terrible for them you're like yeah that wasn't the great and then then there'll be ones that are unbelievable and then i'll hug them and i'll hug curtis and yolanda and uh it's incredible what they can pull off and this season wait you'll see it's really mm. it's the challenges are way like they coming up with the challenges i don't know they they are they are geniuses when they come up with these challenges and how to figure out and how, or not figure out what we're making. Yeah. Was there something this season on the show that stood out to you that in filming that may not even be ap apparent to the audience, especially when we're watching it back? Like, was there a food that you loved the most that we're not going to see too much because it's edited down? Uh, there is one. Hmm. Uh, but I think if I say it, then it's oh, going to yeah. reveal... Hmm. It was... Uh, I would say was particularly challenging uh -huh. given the I'm uh, I think I can say this because last year we delved into our last season we delved into savory as well so yeah. uh, uh, we so yeah we I can say that we delve into that mm. again without okay. and I'm on yellow jackets yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, I do want to talk to you also keeping it into the food stuff. Uh, you were on the bear this season, stellar performance. Uh, I think I told you, you were so mean. You made me cry because the way you were treating Carmi, I was like, that's not the Joel I know. Uh, um, so, you know, I, I feel like, um, I'm the, uh, protagonist of that show. I don't uh, know about that. <laughs> I feel like, uh, I'm the most likable character on the show. If, if he talks to himself in the mirror, sure. <laughs> of course, might be. Um, yeah. yeah, I wonder that was, if it's, yeah. That was good. No, was, it was good times. Because, uh, you know, Chris Storr, I've, I've told you before, Chris Storr, the creator of the show. Yeah. Uh, yeah who also is a phenomenal chef. And mm -hmm. he, could, he could open a restaurant tomorrow and never do TV again if he yeah. wanted to. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, it's his, his sets and Jeremy being the like there it's really fun mm -hmm. and uh it's light and every day every chef was uh every like there were so many fine dining chefs that i thought man if this building explodes we're gonna lose 
more than half of the fine dining chefs in America right now. And, uh-huh. uh, and then Olivia was there too. Yeah. Uh, so on top of the, the queen was there. Yeah. Uh, so I, yeah, I, my uh, imposter syndrome really kicked in and uh, I was like, what am I doing here? And uh, oh. so, but I, you know, Chris just, he, I mean, and and yeah, I, acting with Jeremy and like the guy's one of the best there is. Yeah. So I, it, it, he took me along. So I was very fortunate to be in it. And you know, when it started two seasons, two, two, two and three. a half years ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was in that first episode, and it was just this like, uh, who knows? Like, who knows where it goes. So many things were like, meh, maybe. Yeah. It was really fun. Maybe this will work. Maybe it won't. But it was really fun making it. And then, then, boy, then the governor of Illinois was visiting the set. Uh huh. Like, I guess that's a good sign that you're on a successful show. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah. I but was then, like, did you see the macaroni eating se- section of the show? Yes, there's a whole section just devoted to rice around the morning. It's no, great. Yeah. It's like not even a deleted scene. It's a whole segment. Um, I was going to ask you, what specific elements did you focus on to bring that authenticity to the role? Like, were you ever bullied or mistreated in a way that Carmi was in a position like that? Could you imagine? I was like, nope, never. Uh, <laughs> You're likable. I, I actually wouldn't find it that way. Well, I, I think the uh the culture of chefs has been exposed for quite a number of years and there's really great ones that treat their people great and then there's been obviously um, some pretty well publicized monsters Hmm. and uh so i just read a few things about i mean a few things i read a bunch about that and watched a couple interviews and and uh and also the writing is so good that I just vote. I made. I made sure I didn't screw up the scene and say the wrong thing. And the writing is just so good that it leads you to the path. You know, it walks you down the the road map of where you're supposed to be going. And uh, and so that's yeah. So that's kind of how. I mean, obviously the show is about that and about his journey. So uh, as a chef, so that that. Yeah, I think it's all because store Chris Store is so dialed into the culture of chefs and fine dining that it's it just kind of you know it he just is a genius when it comes to that stuff. So it was, I it made my job very easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's it was a great performance, and I hope we get to see you in season four because uh, that show is phenomenal, and you've been great in it. Oh, I, I have a spinoff coming. Called yeah, spinoff, the, yeah. The, the, the real hero. The real here, David Fields. The real, yeah. Um, before I let you go, our time always goes by so quickly. Um, people are wondering. There were some leaks uh, and rumors this past spring about you being in Jurassic World, and I'm wondering. There was no news after that, and I'm wondering if you are in Jurassic World. I uh, if if you know something, then that would be great. Because I no don't know one, anything. I know nothing. Uh, oh. I don't know. I, no one's asked me. Okay. Well, I guess um, that closes that chapter. <laughs> no one knows. Yeah. Uh, my 16 year old was making fun of me. Okay. He was like, hey, dad, I heard you're going to be in Jurassic World. Uh-huh. Boy, they, boy, how wrong are they? And uh-huh. I was like, okay, kid. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I have not heard. I have no, I, that was, I don't know where that, how that started. And somewhere, I think on Reddit and Twitter and uh, whatever it's called now, but you know, um, I was Are they just, trying to destroy the franchise? <laughs> no, never no. You would be great in it. All right, uh, I will make like, the announcement. Yeah. I'm playing a pterodactyl. Uh huh. Okay, that's great. I think uh, pterodactyls are, I think, underappreciated. Everyone. I agree, it. but that's yeah. I've been fitted for my pterodactyl costume. Uh huh. And, and he's complete uh, with a, a rice aroni macaroni collection. As everyone, knows, dinosaurs love pasta, mm-hmm. and uh, they love. I love their uh, creamy white cheddar uh, flavor, and uh-huh. uh, so, um, yeah, that was th- that's what do- most dinosaurs eat. Yes, and, I think uh, that's only what, what they only eat. They're not like the girls from Yellow Jackets, where they you know people. They actually just eat macaroni. <laughs> that's exactly right. That uh-huh. is the catchphrase uh, of of Rice and <laughs> macaroni. We eat like dinosaurs, not like those people in Yellow Jackets. It's a long, kind of clunky. Uh-huh. Uh, the mm-hmm. catchphrase, but it works out. Oh, by the way, your article about Ken. Uh-huh. Oh, thank you yeah, so much. Ken, really thank great. You. 
Thank you so much for that support. Uh, that means I so was much. like, how do I share this on Instagram without sounding sarcastic? Mm -hmm. So I have to point out that I'm not being sarcastic yeah. when I well, write something out. So yeah. yeah. No, your uh, support uh, means so much. And uh, yeah, I just, uh, it's always so such a pleasure speaking with you, Sir Joel McHale. I see oh, you. thank you for my <laughs> proper title. But yeah. no, thank you for covering this and covering the shows. And yeah, uh, uh, we're going to send you uh, a bunch of macaroni from Rice Thank you. We always have uh, a good time. I'm kidding. We can't. We, we're not bribing you. We're, okay. No, we're... no, it's fine. Um, but uh, thank you always so much for your time. I was going to say uh, stay sharp and keep it cheesy because I think that's exactly stay. what we would want. Very. I agree. And hopefully we'll be back there shooting more crime scene. Yes. And I will be back uh, smelling cakes and seeing. Before all we go. Beanbag. Bean I love him. He's so cute. Yeah.